Good evening, committee members. Uh, I'd like to start the meeting. It is Tuesday, May 1st. I will begin at 6.10. Thank you for being here as we uh, commence the school budget meetings. We have a number of budget meetings set up uh, depending on how things go. And we have a full committee here along with our superintendent, Herb Levine, assistant superintendent, Kara Murtag, our business manager, Jared Stanton. Uh, I did want to make some opening statements as I typically do when we commence the budget talks. And then we'll turn over to Dr. Levine for his summary. And, um, and I certainly say this every year, um, and this year being no different, uh, we are working on the city budget. And certainly there are a number of challenges uh, that the city is faced with that certainly has an impact on uh, all of our department budgets, uh, from the schools, which is certainly the largest, to police, fire, DPW, library, uh, and all the remaining departments in the city. Uh, this year, uh, some of the challenges have been in health insurance. Uh, health insurance and it certainly had an impa impact, and you'll hear from Dr. Levine shortly. Uh, we were notified that the health insurance increase was 9.9% this year which is approximately $2 million increase. Uh, the last couple years had been uh, a little bit better than that, uh, but this year 9.9%, certainly a significant increase uh, that um, uh, we've had to uh, work around as we, as we have our budget discussions in all the different departments. Uh, our retirement obligations went up uh, over $400,000 as a community, and that's just something that uh, is given to us by PERAC, uh, the public Employees Retirement uh, Committee. They provide us with our number based on uh, their analysis, and that's just a bill that has to be paid. So that went up $400,000 this year. Uh, we have all of our union contracts expire on June 30th across the city. Uh, as you all know, uh, we've been in uh, talks with just about every union at, uh, right now. Uh, certainly Brandy Carpenter and Joe Amico and uh, John Olympio have been working on some school budgets. Uh, some school negotiations, and as mayor, I certainly support a cost of a living adjustment for all of our employees, um, and uh, that certainly, though, has an impact on the budget, and, uh, but I think that is something that's deserved as we move forward. Um, but the big issue this year, and it was certainly that something that we were not expecting, um, all of those are typical, the ones I mentioned earlier, as well as some other obligations, are typical ones that we uh, have to work around, but this year, what was unexpected was a fire at the Coolidge Water Treatment Plant in South Peabody, which covers about 70% of our water needs across the city. Uh, we had that fire last year, uh, complete uh, loss of the building, um, and we had to turn over under the emergency, under emergency to Mass Water Resource Authority, the MWRA. Uh, that came at a significantly higher cost for the city of Peabody and its residents. Um, we expect to have the Coolidge Water Treatment Plant back online in May. Uh, we're very close. Uh, there's doing some testing now, so we expect that to be back on when we will go back to city water. Typically, we, the city water is about 70%, and the MWRA is 30%. For the last year, we've had to rely on the MWRA water 100%, um, which, again, uh, really caused some real challenges for us. We do get some insurance proceeds to cover uh, the cost of the water, uh, but we, we were 100% coverage for the actual reconstruction of the building, and then we got $1 million in incidentals and other costs. Uh, the almost the full 100th, uh, excuse me, the full 1 million will go towards water, uh, but we're looking at another 2 million uh, in the range of 2 million on top of that. Uh, so that is a bill that has to be paid. Uh, we've looked into trying to see if we could. Um, borrow that money and pay it off over time at a low interest rate. Uh, we were denied that ability. Uh, our state representatives, Ted Spiliotis and Tom Walsh, are seeing if we could uh, have applied to the state, made a motion to the states to see if we can get some assistance, uh, but I'm not holding out much hope for that. So as of right now, we would be looking to pay $2 million in and above what our typical budget would be. Uh, every year, I always feel that the investments for our community to be strong and what I think has worked for us over the last few years are investments in education and investments in public safety. Uh, certainly those kind of been the priority uh, for me and I know for, for many and I want to continue to do that. I think we've made some great strides as a school committee, as school administration. Uh, certainly the biggest being the Higgins Middle School uh, which is in its second year uh, but also I think we've made some tremendous strides in technology 
and we've made some investments in special education, uh, transportation, things that we needed to do as a community to move the district forward, and I'm very proud of that, and I think all of us are. Uh, this year, though, because of these concerns, there is, uh, there's going to be some difficult challenges for us, some difficult decisions that we're going to need to make. Um, I'm looking at uh, Dr. Levine. Uh, his proposal is summary to us, and I see a projected mayor contribution of $1.8 million. Um, that is a little bit more than I was intending to give, but I appreciate Dr. Levine's efforts uh, to put that forward. Um, but we'll work through that as, as we move along. Uh, I want to try to continue the momentum that we've made. I think we're making an impact in a positive way, uh, but certainly um, I need to make sure that uh, our costs are in line and that uh, we hold tight uh, to certain financial um, requirements to the city. Um, and you know, I just wanted to open with that as I typically do. I can certainly talk in much more detail about that and give you some other items uh, on the budget that we've been wrestling with, but those are the big ones. Uh, health insurance, um, our union negotiations, retirement obligations, uh, but the biggest concern this year has been water. Uh, the good news is I think that's just a one-time item. Uh, we make the payment and it's behind us and then we move on with city business, uh, which is providing our own water to our city. But this year, uh, there's an extra $2 million that's due on top of uh, what our typical budget increase would be. Um, so with that, I wanted to turn it over to Dr. Levine uh, to move forward with the summary, and then we'll certainly open it up for discussion moving forward. Thank, Thank you, Levine. Ma Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I did want to say that I was at the uh, McCarthy School today reading to preschoolers, and at the end, we always take a big group photo, and there was a little girl and little boy on my lap and about 48 other kids around me, and they were taking pictures, and the little girl said, do you have gum in your mouth? And I said, yes. And she said, uh, you have nice teeth. So I just want you to know what kind of an impact I have on the kids when I read. Um, it was a, uh, a wonderful experience. Um, the f uh, four year 18 budget that we're presently working on is $71.894 million, as you can see. And the pro a proposed level service budget, that is, we did not consider any requested increases from any principals or directors, uh, although they made them, uh, we did not consider them. Uh, still leaves us with a projected delta of $6,047,611. Some of the budget drivers the mayor has already referred to. Uh, one of the largest will be the increase in health insurance. Another will be an increase in special education tuition. Uh, some of the others, uh, miscellaneous contract services, dues and fees. Uh, our technology plan. Uh, you, some utilities have gone up. Uh, Medicare. Um, in-district transportation contract, and uh, athletics and performing arts, and uh, some uh, of the building lease. So that combined uh, with uh, other increases that we have um, uh, projected, uh, we are looking at a six over a $6 million delta, and we have to make that up. We have to get to zero. So my team and I have worked uh, over uh, many, many meetings and many hours in um, creating uh, different iterations of what the budget might look like, and this is what we're ready to uh, uh, hand to you as our recommendations, knowing that uh, you will have recommendations for change, uh, as you always do, and uh, that is your right. This is your budget. Until the day you give it to me uh, and vote it, it is your budget to make and create. I did project a $1.8 million contribution from the mayor. Uh, we have anticipated additional revenue of $300,000. We're pretty sure of $200,000 of that because um, the uh, legislature has worked very hard to increase uh, the special ed circuit breaker funding and that should be about a $200,000 increase for Peabody. Uh, right now it looks like it's going to be at around 72%, is that right? Mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, better uh, for us. Uh, and thank you for all the work that you and Tom and uh, all of our people at the State House did to support that. Uh, we really appreciate that. $100,000, uh, I wrote a, a grant um, for kindergartens, um, and uh, Tom Walsh uh, sponsored that grant for us, and uh, we think that we may be getting 100, it, it passed its first test uh, of $100,000. I had asked for 200,000. Getting 100,000 is a lot of money these days uh, in the state budget. Um, if it passes the test in the Senate and eventually gets signed into the budget, 
we will receive that other 100,000. So I am optimistically uh, projecting that we'll receive that in new revenue. Um, I have made, and you have the sheet of uh, proposed reductions. I will not read the sheet, but I will highlight uh, some areas for you. We have also some proposed additions. Um, one is contract obligation. Uh, at the middle school, um, we cannot uh, go beyond 112 per cluster. Uh, with the large amount of kids, uh, the large number of kids coming in from the fifth grade uh, and the small class leaving the eighth grade, uh, we will surpass that number if we don't add a cluster. So uh, I am uh, stating to you that the 140,000 is for two teachers. The cluster will be uh, three or four teachers. I have asked Todd to um, uh, create those other teaching st uh, spots internally from what he has uh, in his school, which he has agreed to do. We have met a couple of times on that issue. Uh, and, uh, but the 140,000 needs to stay in the budget as an increase because of contractual obligations, if nothing else. Um, the $65,000 left that I am proposing to you uh, is something that I think uh, its time has come. Uh, the Brown School needs a full-time assistant principal. It has a part-time assistant principal. I don't think it can function very well anymore without a full-time assistant principal. We are losing a veteran, long-time, uh, wonderful, I, I don't know how else to describe her, a principal um, who is there 24-7 and is one of the great advocates of kids that I have ever worked with in my life. We're losing her, so we'll be hiring a new principal at the Brown. Um, we have lost our assistant principal who has uh, left the school system, and it's a good time to move this to a full-time job. Uh, we already have some money budgeted because we already have part of that position available. Um, we figured it'll cost us about $65,000 to make that a full-time uh, assistant principal position. Remember that this is one of the most complex uh, schools in our district. It has a very high number of special education kids and programs, and if even one or two of those kids um, has a bad day, it can tie up our administrators all day long. I've seen it, I've actually witnessed it, I've been there when it's happened. I believe that very strongly that we need a full-time assistant principal at the Brown. Um, if you would go on to the next page, it is the first iteration of uh, budget reductions that I and my team made, but we then went on to put back some of the uh, things that uh, we readjusted the budget, put back some of the cuts, and wound up with what is the last page, which is the final reductions um, dated 5-1 that I have recommended to you. Uh, and in, in deference and uh, re due respect to uh, my union um, friends who are here, uh, the very first reduction is a reduction of two days uh, from the calendar, two professional development days, which will get us about $550,000 um, out of the budget. And the reason that I'm recommending that, and by the way, no one wants to do that. Um, you know, we, we grinded about that because uh, professional development is critical to a school system moving forward. It's important to support our teachers and our administrators in getting them as much professional development as possible. But in this particular budget, this particular year, as the mayor has said, is basically an anomaly uh, with a, a uh, debt service that um, the city has in this particular year that they will not have moving forward. Uh, we have to do our part in the school budget, and in, that's a large chunk of money. That's essentially nine teachers. So in order to save those teaching positions or other things in the budget that would have to be cut, I am recommending that for this year, not necessarily for the second and the third year of the contract, but for this year coming forward, uh, FY19, that we reduce the number of professional days that we have by two. Um, the rest of the uh, uh, up top uh, Non-personnel reductions speak for themselves. Um, in many cases, we believe that uh, we can make do. We have um, estimated health insurance a little bit less than uh, the number originally uh, proposed. Uh, we think we can make that up because there will be a reduction of people, um, and that does help the health insurance issue. Um, we also believe that we can uh, live with uh, the maintenance reduction, although um, nobody likes doing that. Uh, but 
those are some of the things that we have to give up uh, as we move through a, a budget that is very, very tight. Um, the technology plan, I did want to speak to the technology plan. That's a $130,000 reduction. What that won't allow us to do next year is to um, finish the technology plan with the kindergarten grade one Chromebook cards. However, we can still move forward a year ahead of time and have a 6 through 12 uh, one to one Chromebook um, uh, uh, program so that we're a year ahead. Uh, next year only the juniors were going to have it, but we're actually including juniors and seniors next year, which makes us a year ahead in the technology plan. So for one year, I am suggesting that we don't finish up at the kindergarten grade one and that we uh, uh, keep this as a reduction uh, in technology. Uh, we have moved ahead tremendously in technology. The school committee and mayor have allowed us to uh, move uh, tremendously. We are one of the, uh, I think, the grandest school systems of, in the area uh, with technology, even in some of our older buildings. I think that we can afford this particular slowdown at this particular time. Um, I did want to go to reductions of personnel. Regarding classroom teachers, I believe that at least half of these will be retirements and um, other openings that don't have people in them or um, other openings where uh, people may be leaving the system. I believe that will be at least half of these people. Um, I think that when all is said and done with retirements, openings, and people leaving the district, that most if not all of the 10 reductions uh, will not be people who are presently here that we want to keep. They will be um, openings that we have that we can move these people to other areas. So I have to reduce uh, the number of positions, but not necessarily the number of people. Uh, we will be able to keep most of the people here that we want to uh, keep uh, because of uh, attrition. Um, library paraprofessionals, originally I took them all. I have put back half, which means to me, that the best way to manage that would be to bring back our library paraprofessionals but at fewer hours every day. Same school, but fewer hours. And we would have to fill that in with volunteers. Um, paraprofessionals throughout the district, um, I did want to explain that to you. The $150,000 reduction, uh, at least some of that, 50 to 75,000 will be charged off to a grant. So uh, that's part of the reduction. It's not all people. Uh, and the rest will be uh, a slight reduction in the number of para, we have over 200 and some odd paraprofessionals in the district. Um, I believe that we can afford to uh, combine some of the services that we have in a slight reduction. Two custodians, uh, originally I had five. One of the custodial positions that I'm recommending is uh, one that is not filled right now, we just wouldn't fill it. Another would be a reduction of one custodian, that would be the last hired, uh, whoever that person is. A high school dean, uh, we have talked multiple times to the high school uh, principal and he has talked to his high school administration. I would remind you that we have 450 fewer kids today than when I started here in 2011. Much of that is due to the Essex Tech. Uh, some of that is, is just due to um, smaller classes coming in uh, like we have this year. Uh, the eighth grade is a small class. Uh, I believe the high school and the middle school will be about the same number of kids. Uh, I believe that they can afford, at least at this time, a reduction of a high school dean. Um, Higgins Housemaster, the same thing. I met with uh, Todd and, and uh, his people. Uh, Kara and I have had multiple conversations with them. Um, yesterday we had our final meeting and uh, he and his people have actually recommended that um, they will move things around uh, to account for uh, this position uh, being cut. Uh, very little clerical, um, a guidance position, and that would be at the high school. Uh, we were going to take two positions in the last budget. We only took one. I believe that we can uh, take one more due to the uh, uh, lower number of students. Library power at the high, at the either the high school or the middle school. We haven't made that decision yet. That will depend upon um, uh, further discussion. Uh, the PANS program at night has two teachers and a director. We believe it can operate with one teacher and a director and an attendance power at the high school. 
Uh, as you see, the additions include the Higgins teacher and a full-time assistant principal at Brown with, with the appropriate number next to it, and uh, the additional revenue that we expect to have from the kindergarten grant and special education uh, circuit breaker. With that, um, school committee and Mr. Mayor, uh, I know that this is not delightful, but it's a lot better than the original uh, list of cuts that I had, if you look through the original list of cuts. Um, and I will take your direction as you uh, make changes to this budget and uh, find whatever it is that you direct me to find. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Dr. Levine. Uh, open it up to the committee members. Mr. Olympio. I'll start us off. Thank you, Dr. Levine. Just have a couple of, well, just a few uh, questions as I was going through the binder the past week or so, and I'm not going to ask all my questions right now, but just so, some general questions. Uh, regarding special ed, um, I noticed uh, there was a, a lot of reductions in the West Therapeutic Program, and uh, there was a guidance. Uh, intervention counselor that it's no, no longer budgeted. Can you talk a little bit about some of those uh, shifts? I'm going to turn that over to uh, Jared because I do believe that that's more of a uh, budget book uh, movement yeah. than, than okay. actual shift in people. Okay, right. Jared. Thank you. Uh, like last year, it's just budget cleanup. We're moving people um, to the actual schools that they are in. So the okay. West Therapeutic Program is actually going to be budgeted out of the West School. Okay. Um, that's what... The, um, the other position you were talking about, I believe, is budgeted out of a grant. Okay. That's, that's what I thought. I just wanted to make sure. It just got very confusing uh, when we went into Accountable Unit 17, which is special ed, and trying to figure out where the people were housed, especially as the, mm -hmm. the payroll and the business manager's uh, perspective, and it made sense to move them to the, um, the schools that they were at. I think this will be the last year of that. Okay. Um, so. Okay. Great. Um, let's see. I had a question regarding, under transportation, there was under lease payments for the two new buses. Those uh, Are those leases bargain buyouts? In other words, when the lease is over, are we purchasing those buses for a dollar or some real cheap amount? I, I, want, I believe we are. I can get back to you on that on the buyout cost. Uh, okay. But I believe it is, it is um, a dollar does sound right. Okay. Uh, but I'll, I'll get you that answer. Yeah, I just I see leases, and I'm just thinking, okay, is it more efficient to purchase the buses? But if it's a bargain, you know, purchase at the end of the lease, then then that's great. Right. If, uh, and a lot not, of those we don't want to pay more um, in fixing it, so it doesn't. Right. Some do, do not make sense to, to purchase. Right. Yep. Okay. I just be this is more going forward type of thing. Um, then under administration. There's a few things that I was wondering about. Is that under contracted services? Can you see? There was there was some amounts for futures management, mass insight, other contracts, and superintendents mentor program. Can you just Expand on you know what those are really you know what what those are for and sure I would, who they're a couple children. of them anyway I can and and maybe uh, uh, Kara and and Jared can fill in um, futures management and what was the other one Mass Insight yeah uh, futures management is a consulting company that that um, uh, helped us uh, in in the last two years trying to build um, climate and rapport at the high school. Okay. Uh, did a lot of work with, uh, with our staff. Um, with, although that contract is done now and has been done for quite some time, uh, it, did, it was uh, in for, force for part of this year. Um, Mass Insight is a uh, professional development group that we belong to. It, okay. it drives a lot of our AP courses okay. uh, and it provides a great deal of um, uh, professional development in the um, AP arena and others, other things as well. Okay. And then there's an amount for 10,000 other other contracts. 
and the superintendent's mentor program, 40. Yeah. The 10,000 is for other other contracted service that we will have throughout the year. We're trying to piece that together now. And the superintendent's mentor program will be me as first year superintendent. Okay, okay. And is that to a, is that to a, like a futures type of place or what? Yeah, it, it could be, uh, it, it could be. It's whomever it is that she's comfortable with. Okay. Or whatever it is that she's comfortable with. Okay. All right, thanks. Thank you, Mr. Olympio. Mrs. Carpenter. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> through the chair to the, um, the superintendent, in regards to the futures, I remember having this conversation before. Um, it was my recollection that they were a one-time um, consulting firm that kind of did like a special education audit, and we really only needed them like once every five years. So. Um, I'm kind of confused. Do we still have them? Do we still need them? Is this 30000 that we can save? It's two different companies. So the, the Futures um, uh, Education, which is based in Springfield, did the one-time special education audit. They're gone. They're done. Okay. This is Future Management Systems, which is based in Beverly at the Cumming Center, and they are a professional development organization. Um, and they, yes, this is, all, this is uh, no longer in, in effect. We will not be spending um, uh, much of that money with futures anyway. Mm -hmm. it's, it's professional development money. So when you say it's no longer in effect, is this 30000 that we can now figure in and save something else? Well, maybe, but um, Kara may want to use that as professional development. You know, we've cut professional development in some other areas. So we, would, we don't want to cut everything that we have, which will leave us no uh, pliability. I'll use Tom Brady's word, no pliability, uh, no flexibility for uh, to doing um, some professional development that needs to be done during the year. So I would suggest not cutting back too far uh, in areas like that because we've already taken money from those uh, line items. Uh, understood, just thinking um, if we use that money in this budget elsewhere and then uh, if we needed the professional development or those type of services we could pick it up as we go just to save something now with that instead well you have we have we already taken that we don't want to spend money twice have we already taken that money or do we have that um, budgeted in the professional development area this is still budgeted. still budgeted so you could do that okay thank you sir. Thank you, Mrs. Carpenter. Open it up for any other school committee members, Mrs. Dunn. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Staying on that page, under the superintendent's mentor program, is that the um, uh, in, uh, the new superintendent induction program? Yes, I, yeah. it is right. Mass M A S S. I believe it's the Mass Association of School Superintendents Superintendent Induction Program. Right. Yes. That one's paid over three years, so really we would only need um, a third of that amount in this budget because of the way that they um, that they administer it. So we could reduce that as well. Right. I, I was told it was ten thousand. Yeah. That's that's, 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 that's what I thought, Ms. Stone. So. Yeah. So we could reduce that. What's that? So we is that listed at 30? No, that's two different areas they're talking about. Mr. Dunn, what's that line item? What's the, it's? Um, oh gosh, I'm sorry. 40. It's, um, it's 40. 441. Oh, thank you. It's a tab, tab 22. Yeah. And the supporting material is one, two, three, four, the fifth page of the tab. Thank you. But Mrs. Dunn, your, your um, understanding is that it could be paid over three years? Yes. Okay. We'll, we'll double check that, but yeah, okay, we'll yeah. Sure, certainly look at that. Mm -hmm. Ms. Uh, on that point, Mr. Olympio? Yeah, uh, through the chair, maybe that other contracts is the $10,000 that maybe you were thinking about? Because that, that was my understanding, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that was what I had been told at the training. 
So if we can look into that, that would be very helpful. Is it good? That's it. Still you? You're all seven minutes now? I reserve the right to keep <laughs> coming back. I thought you might. <laughs> oh, sorry, Mr. Olympio? Yeah. Through the chair, I know it's a small amount, but uh, the admin supplies jumped up $9,200. Is there? The reason for that is because it was cut last year, yeah. and these are the actual costs. This year okay. we're currently trying to, uh, it's over budget, and we're uh, transferring okay. other lines to cover that, but those are the actual costs. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lopio. Mrs. Carpenter? Thank you. Uh, different topic, unless somebody else wanted to jump on that page. No, please. Okay. Um, through the chair, Dr. Levine, just wondering about the... Um, Higgins House Master, the reduction on that uh, in comparison to the fact that we have to add a new cluster, is that realistic? Well, um, there were two things on the table, either a House Master or a Guidance Counselor. Um, they went back and they looked at the choices that they had and they much prefer to keep the Guidance Counselor and they think they can work around the House Master, the loss of the House Master. I don't think that um, they, they are going up uh, a little bit in population which will bring them over the contracted number, contractual number, but they're not going up so much that I think that will make much of a difference in, in um, how they administer the school. And there, there is a retirement um, coming forward in that group, so nobody has to be cut from that. It's just not going to be filled. Understood. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Olympio? Uh, I ha actually had a, a flag in under maintenance. Uh, let's see, it's line item 383, uh, maintenance crafts, craftsman. Looks like we added another full time uh, equivalent for 54,307. Is that? That was a position that was reduced last year, but it wasn't actually reduced. So it was reduced from the budget last year, yeah. uh, but that position, uh, I think it was reduced other uh, other places and it was not reduced. I think it reduced a custodian instead, um, but uh, it's really not an ad. It's just, um, it's, it's a position that wasn't budgeted in that line item last year that now is where it should be. Okay. okay. We didn't increase the maintenance. Um, we didn't? Did, we did not. Okay. All right. Is in our maintenance, are there openings in that or is that a filled position? That is a filled position. Okay. I'll send Mr. Lapeel. Mr. Hockman. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you for your opening remarks tonight. Thank you, Dr. Levine, for your opening remarks tonight. Um, so. Sticking on Mr. Olympio's point before I delve into some thoughts I have, um, through the chair to whomever in the administration, are you saying that we voted last year's budget to eliminate a, a um, craftsman position from the budget and that didn't occur? I don't recall that. Uh, we're going to have to check that um, right. because I don't recall that. So, but somehow, uh, it seems at least, and, and look, it's a big budget and there's a lot of lines, and it seems at least that if there wasn't a reduction of a craftsperson, that um, the salary for that position wasn't in um, line 383. Because according to Mr. Stanton, the amount in line 383 for the FY19 budget is an accurate reflection of the expense that has been experienced. So if we can check on that, I don't want to get too much into that right now. I'll have an answer for you tomorrow. Thank you. You're welcome. If I may, Mr. Mayor. Um, so uh, I'll start with the Higgins new cluster. Um, the contract is what the contract is, although we are presently negotiating the contract. Um, my memory is, and I have a very, 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 very clear memory on this because it frustrated me beyond belief three years ago when we budgeted um, 
for one less cluster, but didn't reduce any staff members at the Higgins. What we wound up doing with the staff members that were the four um, primary uh, teachers of the primary courses in that cluster was we utilized them for um, some specials for some uh, and, and beneficial. No, no argument. It took me a long time to um, put my hands around and accept that uh, we're keeping the people and we're keeping the um, salaries associated with them in order to improve instruction. And I think that that took place. Um, I think that there were some benefits to significant benefits to our the kids that attended those programs, and there was some. Um, uh, but I don't think we lost any of those four people, four core teachers, unless they've retired since then. So I don't know why we would need to hire two new teachers to fill out that cluster. We may, lose, we may need to lose some specials, um, but I don't know w why we would need to hire two teachers if we never lost any of the four in the beginning. So I'll ask you, Dr. Levine, if you can enlighten me. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, two responses. Um, that, although we're negotiating right now, we're at the end of negotiations, and that is not on the table. Um, secondly, uh, we believe that the programs that Mr. Busey and his staff put in place um, to utilize those specialists has made a significant and marked difference in some of the um, uh, kids who struggle most uh, in areas like ELA and mathematics. We do not want to lose those positions. Um, Mr. Busey is willing to find two of the positions internally without uh, losing those specialist positions. And uh, I'm funding two in the budget, or at least I'm proposing that we fund two in the budget. And the reason is exactly what you just said, uh, to keep the uh, quality of academic instruction the way it is uh, without uh, retreating. Yeah, if I may, Mr. Mayor. Um, yeah, no, I, I appreciate that, Dr. Levine. It, it, it may be something that I at least want to look a little further into at some point in this process. Um, I, I don't mind, that's not the right terminology. Uh, I, I can accept the um, additional services um, that we never lost. I mean, we, we, excuse me, we never lost the positions or the personnel and provided additional services when, when times were better. Um, but we're looking at some, not fairly, but um, really dramatic decisions here. Um, and that may be something that we could talk about later. I just wanted to at least touch on it, touch on it today. Um, so with regard to the negotiations that are taking place, and, and I don't know where we are in the process, but um, knowing that the health insurance um, premiums have a significant increase this year, and who knows, it, it's one of those difficult things to predict. Is there any, uh, is the contribution for staff towards their health insurance on the table for these negotiations? It is not. All right, and if I may, through the chair to, if I can uh, talk to Mr. Stanton, I had an opportunity to run into him this morning, and I uh, kind of gave him a little preview of a few items that I'd like to talk about. We've talked in the past, and um, I see Ms. Ruby is here, and uh, Ruby, excuse me, and, and, and thank you for coming, and for everyone else that's here for the staff. Um, We've talked in the past about records, and the special education department is, is a paper-driven uh, department through statutory obligations and regulations that are throughout the state. And we've talked in the past about digitizing um, records that we already have that are hopefully being maintained at the uh, Kylie um, in its whatever state of state it's in. But moving forward, um, I've asked for digitizing documents, and I don't want to pick on special education, but it is a more paper-driven department than most. Um, I think throughout the city, throughout the school department, we should be digitizing as many documents as we can um, from two years ago forward. I mean, I'll settle for this year forward, July 1 forward. Um, and so I asked our, uh, Mr. Stanton earlier today if he can give me a number on paper. What, what do we spend on paper as a school department? Do the chair. I, and I looked into that. It's actually quite tricky. The way that the district does the paper is it comes out of discretionary supplies. So we don't have a paper line. We have a copier line, which is on the district level, but we don't have a paper line. 
So if I'm at the Brown School, paper comes out of the office supplies. If I'm at the, the, the um, Burke School, same thing. So uh, I don't have an answer for you yet. Uh, the, um, I wanted to give you a, a true answer. Uh, what I would do is I would go in and, and look in the system, probably pull some Rex, W. B. Mason. Um, that's where we get a lot of our paper. Um, so I don't have an answer. If I had to do a rough estimate, it would probably be in the, the you know two to three hundred thousand dollar range. Okay. And oh yes, Dr. Levine. Just uh, to address your other issue, um, we did some research uh, with our special ed attorney. I thank Mrs. Gruby uh, for doing that research. Um, and our special ed attorney gave us a wonderful answer. Um, he said that, because I asked the question, is it legal to do special ed documents and, and special ed signatures online? Uh, and it is, actually. Um, and that can take the place of paper in many instances. However, he cautions against it uh, for security reasons. Um, he feels that uh, we need to continue to produce the paper that we're continuing. He also talked about discriminatory practices with people that don't have access to computers as easily as others. So he recommends strongly against it. Yeah, no, thank you, Dr. Levine, and, and maybe maybe we're misunderstanding each other. I'm not. I believe paper records are, are important, and and certainly people who require a, a document, a paper physical document, in order to receive it should. Um, however, I think that there's a lot of a lot more than one copy of an IEP or, or other documents that are floating around. That's what I'm looking to curtail um, and think that first, not, not only for the cost of the paper, but for um, the amount of time it takes to, you know, you digitize it, you download it on, a, on a, either an external drive or, or a computer, and then, you know, Ms. Gruby, calls her department and says, can you get me, you know, Jane Doe's IEP because I need to review it. There's a hearing coming up or something like that. It's a, a desktop. It goes to a desktop and she's able to review it without a, a staff person getting up, going to a copier, spending time and money on paper and toner and all that other stuff. I, I think that a physical copy is important. I, I agree with you. I'm not looking to eliminate that. And again, I don't mean to pick on Ms. Gruby's department. I think that there are efficiencies that we could utilize throughout the school department. Um, wor uh, I, I think um, work orders are still being used with carbon paper or, or carbonless paper uh, as opposed to electronic. Um, I mean, there are just certain areas where we can um, grab a little bit of money. I, I don't think it's a lot of money in the big scheme of a 72 or $74 million budget. But we're 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 going to get faced at the at the end of this budget with making some um, perhaps personnel decisions that I'd like to avoid if we can look at some of those other areas. Just one quick response on that. Um, I think you are, you're aware of this. We are digitalized in in many ways. <coughs> excuse me through eSped. Um, so uh, special ed does do a lot of their work on online at this point. And if I can just finish up this area. Please don't take anything I'm saying as a criticism. No, no, no. Yeah, no. I'm just trying to look at, uh, you know, ways of, of least impact reductions. That's yeah, we should look at efficiencies, and we will. Thank you, Mr. Hockman. Mr. Miko. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, for the chair of the um, admin team. Um, on the utilities, I did notice an $80,000 um, increase, or 12.45% increase in electric utilities. Is that something that's being carried over from a department or what's the increase there? What we did is a five-year actual. Uh, I worked with Dave Gamash, Tim Healy, um, and electrical is going up. Uh, so we um, put the $80,000 increase in that electrical line. Um, some years are higher, some years are lower, uh, but we thought an $80,000 increase would uh, be suffice for next year. Okay, we have a budget. <laughs> Mrs. Carpenter. Thank you, through the chair. I have some questions in the um, athletics department. Um, I noticed that there is a 20,500 increase in equipment. What is that for? 
a lot of it's through uh, Rydell football um, in some of the trying to fix some of the equipment that was pushed off in previous budgets. Okay. So I think a lot of it is the fixing of the, the Rydell equipment for, uh, for the football. For the football yeah. helmets and such. Yeah. And um, I was putting together the gate receipts and the user fees. Um, so the result of a vote that we had taken, which, which was great, letting all of our students come in, did that come out to be thirty-seven thousand dollars? Correct. The, the what we anticipate for lost in revenue on user fees uh, on gate receipts is sixteen thousand, and the true number uh, due to the increase of the free and reduced lunch and the number of students that are playing the sports, uh, we felt that the user fees number had to be reduced. I think to ninety-five thousand. Okay. So that was just a a, a projected. Yeah. Yeah, we had we had continually projected higher than what we actually got, so this oh, okay. is this is a truer number. That's more okay. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. Um, that's all I have right now. Thank you. Thank you. Why don't um, Why don't we take a five minute break if we could, and then uh, resume if uh, there's no objection. No objection. Okay. Mm -hmm. Deductions, um, it, it, it does make me pause because of the way we have our um, schools structured. You know, the high school, we have a dean for each house. The Higgins, we have a house master for each grade. Those were all implemented because the actual goal and the, um, the proven uh, improvement for any school is not only lowering your class sizes, but also trying to make a school, um, you know, as a smaller learning community. And I know that in some instances that's a very specific term. But overall, what you want to do when you have a large school is you want to make it less intimidating to the students. And you want to have the staff that know the students. And it's been a very good system. We are here at Higgins, you've had a grade level housemaster who has followed the sixth grade into seventh and into the eighth, and then they rotate back through again. As a matter of fact, with that system and the cluster system, we are sitting in a building that was one of the first MSBA ever allowed to be designed to accommodate the program. Originally, they wanted us to just take a blueprint off the shelf, which would have been a high school building, and it would have been structurally set up totally different. So after they heard about our program, they allowed us to go ahead and design the building to accommodate our program. And now this is actually turning into a model where they're allowing other schools to do that. At the high school, one of the biggest pieces on that social emotional balancing that's so important now has been, again, to have someone that the students end up working with through their placement, you know, they're, they're all placed a, a, B, or C house. And my concern is changing that can change the impact we can have on students. So some of this is, is very difficult because it's very different. And those have been long-standing systems. And um, I know in a budget everything, you know, it, we have a lot of trade-offs. We have a lot of things that we, we, we can't get everything we want, and I know that but trying to limit the impact as much as possible on the delivery of services to the students is where I, I, I really do need to think about some of these and, and not knowing the actual, um, the, the actual location of some of these changes. You know, we just found that out, so it's important to know that. Great, thank you, Mrs. Dunn. Uh, one question I did have um, on Dr. Levine, if you could go through, in terms of the paraprofessionals, again, there's uh, five FTEs at $150,000, but I do know with the asterisks there, could you maybe just explain that again to me or to us? So $50,000 of that reduction will actually come from a 
240 grant, uh, which is a special education grant that allows us to pay for uh, some personnel. Um, the other 100,000 will actually come from, from bodies, and we're going to have to reduce the number of paraprofessionals that we have um, by at least uh, three um, folks. And that's, um, you know, I, I believe we had at last count 213, somewhere around 213 um, paraprofessionals. I think that reducing by a small number will not um, put a tremendous burden on the school system. And the custodians, the, the two bodies, uh, the two FTEs, um, are those filled positions now, or maybe you just explain where those stand? One is unfilled. Uh, I directed that we not fill the position when it came open, uh, knowing that this would be a difficult budget year. And the other uh, would be the last hire in the school district, um, whoever that person may be. How, how long have we been without that one position? Has that been yeah, a few months? A few months. A few months. A few months. Yeah. Okay. Is there has there been much of a concern about that? Is that was that just the second floater position? Because we have one. My understanding we have two floaters. Yes. So there was one floater not hired. So we have one floater right now. I believe that's the case. Is that Correct. The, yeah. the other floater went in to uh, really cover that position. So yeah. Okay. So we have one. Yeah. Right now. Okay. Would, you be, would we be able to, um, for our next meeting, maybe have a breakdown of some class sizes? Sure. Um, particularly at the high school. Well, actually, class sizes for, for all, but I know certainly the reduction in students over the last several years at the high school, um, you know, that'd be helpful to have that sense as well as to what the numbers are in those classrooms. I mean, really, I've been 450 students since 2011. That's almost a whole grade. Um, you know, when, I'm, when I was in school, our class was 450. I'm sure you remember, it was yeah. probably the same, Mr. Olympio. Yeah. Mr. Miko? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, through the chair to um, Dr. <coughs> Levine and Ms. Murtai, could we also get, on these um, potential reductions here, could we also get um, retirements out of that and uh, potential non-renewals on that? For the, for the, for, for, for any, uh, the for 10 the teachers, FTEs? For the, yeah, for the 10 teachers. Sure. Um, I can share with you the uh, retirements and the number of non-renewals. Okay. Okay. Sure. Thank you. Uh, and may I address uh, your your other issue? And by the way, I just graduated a few years ago. It was yeah, just a I, few years I ago. I see that. Hey, Mr. I noticed. Who was your graduating I was class? I for it. Uh, Say that again. Who was your graduating class? 2012. No, but how oh, many of your students? Do you remember? Oh, I don't. I don't remember. I, I don't know what the size. Yeah. yeah. I think Mrs. Dunn. Yours was about 800. Biggest class. Yeah. Well, it was definitely less yeah. than that. So mine was well, 450 yeah. you know, so, some, some years ago. Well, I was a baby boomer, so mine was almost 800 as well at Revere High School. But I am not as old as you. <laughs> <laughs> Put that in the record. Yep. But they told us in Revere we only had to come to school one of every other five days, so. <laughs> um, we just, only went three years. <laughs> just, to, just to address uh, your issue. Um, I would be able to supply you with the class sizes that we presently have at the high school. We would be, we haven't projected yet and we haven't done the schedule yet for next year. So um, I can't tell you what it would look like for next year, but it would be um, not too dissimilar to give you this year's class sizes. I can run that for you. Thank you. All right. Mrs. Carpenter. Um, it, while we're talking about homework for the superintendent, can we also get, um, with some of the uh, monies that was identified uh, through Mr. Olympio and the administrative part, some of those monies that we can possibly switch over to um, reduce some of these reductions. Could you look at those figures again? Sure. Okay, thank you. Mr. Hockman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, along the vein, that vein, I see, you know, in the, um, asterisk items where we're going to utilize some grant funding to pay for or offset some of the reductions. Can you give us a little more detail at our next meeting as to what opportunities we're not going to um, experience as a result of that? In other words, what, other, what, could, what, what could we have used that money for for those grants or what are we using that money for 
under those grants that we're not going to have in the future. And then um, I know in reading through the capital wish lists from the various um, principals, uh, there seem to be some themes with regard to gymnasium floors, um, sanding and uh, relining and polyurethaning and uh, through the chair to the chair. Is that something that um, trades people within the city are capable of doing at a cost of materials as opposed to um, having to hire someone? And I don't know the answer to that, and I don't want to, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but just a thought. It just seemed to be a, a theme among um, some of the older, particularly elementary schools. Um, and lastly, um, Mr. Smoyer in particular, in his uh, capital improvement request is, and it's low on the list, I don't know if they're prioritized, uh, is looking for some modulars um, because space is uh, not available within the McCarthy, primarily I suspect due to the um, integrated preschool that's there and you know, talked about some, I think, IEP meetings that are taking place in uh, not so private space, which is a little concerning. Um, are any of these modulars in the budget as we have it now? Speak to, I speak to that. To the first point, I, I can find out about Jim Floors. Yeah. I don't know yet, but I can find that Thank out. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. A couple of responses. Uh, with, a, with the proposed cut in the maintenance budget, some of those uh, jobs that we would like to do won't be able to be done. Yeah. Um, to the uh, point about modulars, there are no modulars in the budget. They're very, very expensive. Uh, modulars usually become permanent um, as opposed to uh, portable. And um, uh, it, it is a good point, however. One of the reasons that I'm moving special ed to the high school, which has the room, is to open up three classrooms at the west. And we're going to think about um, some of the possibilities and how to use that space. Uh, you, you know, it's possible we could um, uh, split uh, the early childhood program and uh, move it to the west uh, to open up some classrooms at the at the McCarthy. I will tell you that this year I had to cut the uh, library at the McCarthy in half in order to open up another kindergarten. So we we partitioned uh, the library and on one side of the library we had a uh, new kindergarten class because his kindergarten classes were just so oversubscribed. Um, which scrunched the library a bit. You know, I'd really like to reopen that library space and have a classroom or two for him to uh, um, utilize, but I can't promise that right now. Yeah, no, and thank you for anticipating my follow-up question, which is what's the plan, because I didn't think we were going to get the modulars, so, but we can't have IEP meetings. Um, things that need to be private need to be private. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Amico. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through the chair to uh, Dr. Levine. Dr. Levine, could you also reach out to uh, Representatives uh, Walsh, Spiliotis, and Senator Lovely to see if there are any updates on funding, um, other than circuit breaker, maybe um, some of the funding that um, neg that impacted us in, in terms of um, low income to poverty. I know there was a there was a change last year, and there's something brewing now. Possibly uh, there might be more funding available to us. Maybe if we can get an update. I, I know. Th I mean there. You know, they work so hard for us on the education and maybe they have an update that uh, they can bring forward to us. Actually, through the chair, if I may, uh, Andrew might be able to uh, answer some of that question. I do know that I read a, uh, an update uh, from uh, Representative Speliotis' office today, this morning, um, that suggested that there was an increase in emergency aid for, particularly slated though, for um, uh, those of us who accepted uh, an overload from Puerto Rico and from the U.S. Virgin Islands because of the hurricanes. So we have to look at our numbers and see whether or not we would qualify. I have no idea if we would qualify. There are other cities and towns that, that really took boatloads, literally, uh, of people. Uh, we did not. We took some, um, but we have to see whether or not uh, the impact that, um, that uh, we have had qualifies for any additional funding. Yeah. So we can look into all types of avenues down that road but we just wrapped up our house budget now. Uh, and again, that's money that is still very fluid, as I'm sure you all know. Uh, but that's something we can look into. I can't make any promises, and it would obviously come down to the specifics of 
what's allocated if we would be eligible for it. But right. yeah. through the chair, just to wrap that up, Representative Walsh, Speliotis, and Senator Lovely have been tremendous educational advocates for us uh, and, and have kept in touch with us on a regular basis. So I want to thank them publicly for all their hard work. Any other uh, thoughts or questions at this time? I know we have a meeting scheduled for the 15th. Is that our next meeting? Mm -hmm. Okay. We have a regular school committee meeting on the 8th. Yep. Do we have subcommittees prior to that? They, they have something scheduled. We do? Yeah, and I think there's a, uh, a, a grievance, a uh, short grievance scheduled at 645, I believe. I don't know if there's any subcommittee scheduled on the We have, we have interviews. We have interviews at four, five, and six, but that has nothing to do with yeah. the school committee except those people that are on the committee. Mm -hmm. And then at 645, uh, or as soon thereafter as we could get here, I believe we have a uh, uh, grievance scheduled. Okay. So but I don't think there's a subcommittee scheduled. Do, do we have, do you know, uh, for that meeting, the regular meeting, do we have any presentations or any particular issues you think could be lengthy? Uh, we do not, that I know of at this point. Do we want to keep the 15th, or do we want to try to schedule maybe an hour on the 8th? Um, I'll just throw that out there for discussion. If we wanted to maybe do the regular meeting at 7, and then maybe a budget meeting at 8, if, if we don't anticipate a lengthy school committee meeting, if there's not any presentations, you know, maybe we could grab an hour, continue the discussion. I'll, op idea. I'll open that up for uh, Mr. Hockman, then this is done. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, I think it's a, a great idea. I'd at least post it and, and see where it goes. And if we have the opportunity to do it, I'd, I'd be in favor of that. And I'd say even if we don't, I'd, I'd like to receive as much of the information that we've requested tonight on the 8th as is available. Um, and if we can go into an, a budget meeting after that, that's great, or at that time. Um, so I, I think that's a, a good idea. And, and if also, we can, uh, I don't mean to get off topic here too much, but um, we, we generally work these things backwards. Uh, in other words, we need to figure out a date by which we need to have a, a budget schedule, a public yeah. meeting and stuff. If, if on the 8th you're able to give us that information, so well, it yeah. makes scheduling yeah. a little easier. Come from your office. Right? Yeah, let me work on that. Thank you. That's a, that's a good idea. Uh, if I may, um, Mr. Mayor, I will get as much of this information to you as uh, I can tomorrow that you've requested. We should be able to gather that information up as quickly as possible. Um, just a, a question. The, since we're going to have a regularly scheduled school committee meeting on the 8th, budget can simply be on the agenda as opposed to a separate meeting. So mm -hmm. it just becomes an agenda item yeah. if you'd like to do it that way. Uh, otherwise, it's, it, it, or is it a subcommittee of the Finance Committee? Because it wasn't, I don't think it was listed as a subcommittee of the Finance Committee. I think it was listed as a regular school committee meeting. My thought is I'd like to have a scheduled budget meeting of the whole. Um, so would you want a... So regular uh, meeting at 7, budget meeting at 8. So uh, would that feeling. be a meeting of the Finance Committee and the whole? I'd like to do it as a committee meeting of the whole. Oh, okay. That's okay. Yeah. Mrs. Dunn? Yeah, I, I, I'll be honest. I would like to have a budget meeting next Tuesday while we're, we're into this now. And having to skip a week, yeah. you know, so trying to gear up again, it, it can be difficult so that you can remember all the details. Um, as far as posting it, I'd say just post it the same way tonight was posted. Okay. It would be fine. And um, that way, you know, we can proceed. And uh, thank you. For any of the information you can give us ahead of time would be very, really great. And Mr. Mayor, anybody that would like uh, has any thoughts on the budget, don't hesitate to get them to me so that we can put them on a list for public consumption. Okay. All right. With that, uh, why don't we adjourn? Um, we're going to recess. We're, we're going to recess to May 8th, okay. and we'll uh, we'll have a budget meeting scheduled at that time. Motion to recess. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Hockman. Thank Great. you, committee members.